we launched this product on Tuesday, so it is shipping right now. Um, you have a variety of ways that you can purchase. You can purchase off of our store. We will shortly also have this on the Apple store. You can also go to the Microsoft store. So however you like to purchase, there's a variety of options and the price point in US pricing is $49.99. We've also via Corel directly put together a really nice brush bundle for you. So you're getting 10 brush packs that are worth $199, just as an added bonus for purchasing Painter Essentials 8. So what is new? Um, there's all kinds of things. And you know what we do with Painter Essentials, we've got Painter Pro, which has all the tools in the world in it. With Essentials, we try to bring in those tools that are perfect for beginners, um, the friendly tools so that you can get in there, get started, you know, learn your digital art skills, and then you can move up later when you're ready. So some of the things that we have brought into Painter Essentials 8 are new brushes. I'm gonna attempt to show you, I think almost all of the 23 new brushes here today. Um, you have new ways that you can select color. We have wonderful artificial intelligence presets, and there's 10 new ones. I'll show those off as well. You, of course, still have access to the previous presets, and I'll show you how to get to those. Um, and there's all kinds of new Apple support. If any of you out there, I right now am using my M1 MacBook Pro, so that's what I'm demoing on here today, but we run on both Mac and Windows, and if you do happen to have the latest system, we're compatible with that. So as far as the new brushes go, um, the brushes that we decided to bring in, we really, and Actually, overall, even with AI presets, the brushes, we looked at brushes that were very traditional media focused. So we decided, you know, where do we have some gaps? 23 new brushes. Pencils category now has, if you walk into the art store, you see hard and soft pencils. We brought those in. We have some new pens and we did work very closely with artists. Um, we've added some additional smoothing to the calligraphy and the smooth pen. We also have the flat color and drippy pen, so some nice options there. As far as chalks go, there's a new stick, a glazing, fan and grass. So, I mean, you can sit and read these. <laughs> I'll touch on them during the demo. Now, when you first launch Painter Essentials, we also have a new drawing and painting layout. And we should probably mention that the um, the laptop layout, I believe it was called, has turned into the photo painting layout, and I'll show you about that as well. So the new color options, the harmonies are now in Painter Essentials 8, and I'll show you how to best use those, but for somebody like me who might have a difficult time selecting or choosing my own colors using the color wheel, the harmonies make this very simple. Um, so we've got complementary, light monochromatic, dark monochromatic. We've also brought in three new color sets. So we've always had a painter color set with a wide variety of colors. You now have three more to choose from, and I'll show you those today, and also how to work with the panels efficiently. So with our photo painting tools, um, I mentioned that we have 10 new AI presets. You're gonna find those in the photo painting panel. Um, and it's as simple as selecting a preset and clicking start and it will paint away. These presets take advantage of both Apple technology and also um, on the Windows end of things, Onyx. And what that's going to do for these presets, they're gonna run a little bit faster because we're taking advantage of that technology. And on the Mac end of things, we worked closely with Apple so that we could include saliency. And if nobody is familiar, or if some of you are not familiar with what that is, um, if you have an iPhone or if you've ever taken a portrait on another phone in portrait mode, where it kind of blends out the background and brings the subject matter to the forefront, that's the technology that we've integrated with our brush strokes. And you'll see that in action because I'm demoing on the Mac today. Um, and then there are nine new painting brushes in the auto painting category. All right, so as far as Apple goes, 
Um, if you're familiar with our pro product, we brought in these capabilities there. We've now rolled them into essentials. So if you happen to have an iPad, you can run Sidecar and you can mirror your desktop on your iPad and you can paint away there using the Apple Pencil, which we support both tilt and pressure using that device. Now today, I'm on the MacBook Pro. I'm using a Wacom Intuos tablet. So, you know, there's a bunch of different ways that you can paint. I'll even show you with some of the photo painting options that you could use a mouse. If you don't have a tablet, you can use a mouse for the photo art. We highly recommend that you have some kind of pressure sensitive drawing device though. Um, the other thing you're not gonna be able to see in action because it doesn't show on the screen is the touch bar support. So once I launch Essentials, the touch bar is gonna give me all kinds of commands that I can quickly tap on right from there. And then I also have the multi-touch trackpad support. If I wanna pan, zoom, rotate using my fingers, I can do that as well. All right, so Big Sur and Silicon, yes, we do support these. It is compatible. Um, when the Mac App Store version is posted, it should be within the next day or so. Um, we're just waiting for them to get that up there. Um, that is natively running M on the N1 hardware. So you can grab that from there. We also have the desktop version that will run as well right off of our e-store. And I had mentioned already, you know, some of the speed enhancements with the auto painting itself. Um, so it could be up to four times faster when you're, you're going through that experience. Additionally, um, just some more specifics about, you know, what's happening behind the scenes here. We've got 14 brushes in essentials that are based on drip liquid plug-in technologies. A lot of those are Sargent brushes, which are actually one of the favorite types of media categories in both Painter and Essentials. So those should um, run nice and fast for you. We've also had some speed enhancements in the blenders and the FX brushes. Um, outside of the 23 new brushes, 14 brushes were also you know, tweaked so that they perform better no matter what platform you're on. You've got a new image dialog box that I will show you, but you can now set up a landscape document by default if you want to. We've got some new patterns that I'll show off, and then the layer enhancements. I'll also try and cover these as I go through, but you can now lock your canvas, duplicate the canvas. If I have a whole stack of layers I've been locking along the way, I can just right click to unlock them. Um, you'll also find some streamlined options on the property bar for all of this, and I'll point those out as we go along. All right, so that concludes the presentation here. I'm just gonna quickly go over, we'll launch up Painter Essentials. All right, so over here, I just launched up Painter Essentials, and right from the welcome screen, I'm gonna go right up to the top here. You can create new documents, you can set those up yourself, it'll allow you to access recent documents. If I go under the layouts, this is where we're gonna find the new drawing and painting layout. We've got photo painting, and then you have your tablet right and left-handed. I think it was called laptop that we converted over to um, calling it photo painting. And just quickly, before I go ahead and launch up the drawing and painting mode, we do have new feature videos already loaded up for you in app. We've got some tutorials. There's even more to come here though. Um, Karen created the landscape painting series. So that's in there. Um, everything else is linked to from our website and eventually we'll also get those in the screen for you a little bit further down the road. So let's go to layouts. And if we take a look, you can kind of see behind here the interface right now. I see the photo painting panel. If I click drawing and painting, it is now giving me, it removed the photo painting and I have access to the mixer and the color sets. So let's just start over on the right and kind of work our way around the interface. In the mixer, um, this comes in very handy if you like a traditional paint mixing workflow. So I can, let's see here, if I wanna come over to the color wheel and mix up a color, 
I can bring that over to the mixer pad. You can select the colors up on the top and you can drop those on the mixer pad. There's already quite a lot on the pad. So if you wanted to delete what is there and start from scratch, you can do that as well. Okay, and you can always get any of the defaults back. So as I'm adding content here, I could also increase my brush size if I wanted to add more paint onto the mixer pad. And then we can select from any of these colors here and you see the color wheel is updating and it will allow me to paint with those. Um, if I wanted to restore the default mixer pad, just right down on the bottom here, I can click to restore the default. If you press the space bar, you can also pan around. So if you wanted the default, but then wanted to add, you know, your own paint off to the side here, you could do that as well. So that's just the basics of working with the mixer pad. Now, if I come over to the color sets, here we have the painter color set that has been in there for quite some time. Um, we now have grayscale, flesh tones, and pastels as well. So you can choose to have all of these by default. They're all loaded up. But if you come down to the bottom right-hand corner, I could say, oh, I don't want the painter colors, and actually I don't want pastels either, and then it will only leave the options that you have selected. If we do bring them all back, I can also resize these. So to the left, I tap once, it's gonna put every color palette or color set into the window. Um, you could also zoom in if you want a closer view. So work the way that you like by using the controls down on the bottom here. I'm gonna zoom in one more level. Then we have the harmonies and the harmonies are amazing. They help me out all the time. So I selected a color swatch from here. The harmonies are updating. You've got your complementary monochromatic light and dark. And if you happen to really enjoy one of the options that you have here, so if I want my complementary set locked down, now as I begin to choose different colors, you see only the other two are changing. So as you're painting, you can lock them down, you can unlock them, it really depends on your workflow and what you want to have easy access to. So I'm gonna go ahead and unlock that. Then we have our layers. And we don't have a document right now, so I don't even have a canvas. Um, so let's come over to the left. And now I've got the toolbar here. And the toolbar has a nice bright highlight that displays whatever tool I have selected at the moment. We did um, pull out the layer adjuster tool and we put it uh, in, in its own location on the toolbar for easy access. And there's a lot of new options for that. I'll show you those as we go along. You always have a paper texture that you can change at any given moment. So you could have multiple textures in one document. Color wheel, move it around as you like. Um, I can also resize it. If I you know, click to the left or to the right, I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller. I'll go ahead and make it smaller. And we'll talk about these options a little bit later. Okay, so because I didn't have a document open, if I click the desktop on Mac, it drops me out of Painter Essentials. So just in case that happens to you and you're not familiar, all you need to do is come up to the file menu. I'm gonna create a brand new document. And from within here, we have two new options, landscape and still life as presets. So if I select one of these, I now have that landscape orientation. You didn't even have the option to choose that previously in Painter Essentials 7. You can certainly change anything that you like, width, height, resolution. I could even change the color of the canvas or the paper texture with both the landscape and still life. We've set up certain colors for you that are very common in these workflows, but if you wanna change them, no problem. So I'm gonna come in and maybe I want a blue background. Go ahead and you also have access to the color sets. You can use the color ramps to make adjustments. Close out of that. If I go to the paper texture, the same library that we have on the toolbar, I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay. So here's my canvas and I am going to use my um, trackpad here and I am just you know, pinching to increase the, and moving out to increase the size of the document and pull my fingers back in to shrink it. I can pan, I could also rotate. I don't really have a reason to have to do that right now, um, but, because there, there's always more than one way to control things, 
We also have the magnifying glass. Click, drag, right or left. That will also allow you to change the size of the canvas. You can also do it on the property bar. And if you have a tablet that allows touch, you could do it on there. So, um, you know, zoom your document the way that you might like to. So let's go ahead and grab the brush tool. And before I do anything, I'm gonna come over to the layers and I'm gonna lock down the canvas. So that just means it's protected. I'm not gonna paint on it. I'm gonna insert another layer and this is where I'm gonna create my sketch. And keep in mind, guys, I'm not an artist by trade. So I'll do uh, you know, a little primitive kind of sketch and rendering for you. Um, I'm gonna come over to my color sets and I'm just gonna grab a color from there. You can see how the harmonies lit up. And let's take a peek into the brushes. So by default, right before we started the webinar, I held down shift, which reset the interface for me. So that means this is all set back at default. Um, I do have some brush packs. So the brush packs that you get when you purchase Painter 8, and I also have another set in here, they all show up within the brush categories. If you want to expand your brush selector, I hovered too long there, you just click and pull down. Okay, I could shrink it or expand it. You can also likewise move it you know, to the right if you want to. And you see how it starts stacking the um, brush variant imagery. So what do we have in here? We had mentioned that we did a lot to streamline the brushes. Um, so one example of that is previously we had the pencils, the pens, and the markers. They were all in one brush category. So you kind of had to scan through to find what you needed. So we pulled them apart and we added some additional brushes into these categories. Now, as I'm going through the demo, I will point out what brushes are new. Things like the hash, if I go to my particles, Gravity Lazy Sketch is new. So the new brushes are scattered throughout the brush categories, um, but we showed you those in the slide right at the beginning so that if you need access to that, you have it. So let's, let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and start with my pens. And two of the pens that we streamlined for really smooth edges are the Smooth Calligraphy and the Smooth Pen. So let's move our color wheel back over there. White is good color to work with. Um, right now, my brush is kind of small. I do have good, fairly good pressure, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and you can resize your brush numerous ways. I'm pressing Command Option or I think it's option control um, to resize the brush, but you can also do that right up on the property bar here. You can also use bracket keys. Okay, that's a little bit better for me. One other thing that I could do is go into the preferences, go to brush tracking and give it a sample of my touch. So I'm just doing a light to hard stroke. I can see that the pressure has been modified in particular for me. This is gonna be a global setting. I could also apply certain levels of pressure to different brush variants if I want to. So let's say, okay, I already have my sketch layer here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just begin to create crazy little sketch. Um, I'm in Chicago and it is so frigid here. So I think I, I'm just still kind of in Christmas mode. So I'm gonna draw a little, uh, kind of Santa Clausy gnome here. Okay, I told you guys I'm not, I'm not an artist. So there we go. Now I see a couple of mistakes, you know, there might be some areas. If I take my Wacom stylus and I flip it, I could start to erase some areas if I want to. If I don't like that, I can put it back. Um, you also have an eraser tool over on the property bar that you could do the same thing. Okay, so there's my basic sketch. And if I want to um, name my layers as I go, I can certainly do that. We can also lock them down as we're, um, you know, if I decide this is all I want on my sketch layer, I am going to go ahead and click that little lock button there and lock it down. So back to the canvas, I'm gonna go ahead and add a layer. And now I'm gonna come back up and we'll start to do some rendering. So if we take a look here, I'm gonna to go to chalk, pastel and crayons. 
and I'm not going to probably, the one brush that's new in here is the stick brush. So let's go ahead and this is where the, me not having to mix up colors might come in handy. If I go to the color sets, I'm gonna grab a flesh color. And if I size the brush up here, you can see um, this is a nice brush. It's not exactly what I want just for filling in large area color. You know, it kind of has a bristly, textury look to it. So that brush is one of the new additions. One of the brushes that I happen to love for filling in areas is this square Conte. So let's go ahead and it is incorporating some of the texture that whatever texture you have selected over there in the um, right over here, I could change that on the fly. The harmonies come in handy for me as well during this workflow, because if I wanted, you know, a little bit of a darker color, if I wanted to apply kind of a shadow there, then I can just use the harmonies to do that. And instead of having to mix up a whole different color. Now, if we go to the blenders, you know, if it didn't blend quite the way that I wanted to, I could always come in here and start to use any kind of blender to begin to fine tune this. I'm not gonna go for perfection here. So let's come back and I'm gonna go back to that brush that I like so much, the Square Conte. And this time I'm gonna change the texture and maybe we'll use the color wheel to mix up a little different color. So here we go. I'm just gonna quickly kind of fill in, try and stay in the lines. If I go out, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. I went into his nose. I could probably even blend that in to make it look like he's really cold if I wanted to. All right, so let's fill this in. And one of the other new brushes that is pretty neat is in markers. And this brush is called the Hatch Tool. So taking a look over here, um, if I wanted a darker version of that red color, I can just use the harmonies once again. So I'm gonna come here and we'll just throw a little bit of hatching on the edge of the hat here. And I can put some strokes elsewhere, but this is a combination of a bunch of different little lines together, saving you a lot of time. So you can just quickly fill things in. And that nose is kind of bothering me. So I'm gonna go to the blenders quickly. And we'll just fix that up. All right, so let's go ahead and lock down the head. I'm gonna go back to the canvas and let's work on this beard here. So if I want to fill that in, I'm gonna to come to my sponges and the soft texture brush is one of the new brushes. And what this does is it incorporates a flow map texture. So up on the property bar, I see dab stencils. Um, probably just want white or, you know, maybe I could go one level below white to start filling this beard in. And because I'm using the stylus, if I press lightly, it's going to catch, you know, the very tip of that um, flow map texture. If I press hard, it's going to fill in the grooves and fill more in. So you could switch textures randomly, you know, as you're going through and painting this. Hard pressure is going to show more of the texture. Softer pressure is gonna make it a little bit more subtle. So we'll just fill this in, it's kind of soft and fluffy. And next we're going to move, we'll start working a little bit on the bottom. So where is this gnome hanging out? Um, so I'm gonna come back, let's see, I'm gonna add another layer. And for this, we'll come to our pattern pens. So here are pattern pens and I've got a, um, there's three different types. The brushes themselves are not new, but we've got some new textures for you. So if I come up here, the new textures are fire, there's moss. So let's just go ahead and experiment with these and I'm going to size the brush up. Okay, so I can see I'm falling behind my sketch and that kind of bugs me. So what I'm gonna do is we'll take that layer and maybe I just want to move it up. Okay, so let's, oh, I didn't do it the right way. Oh, it would help if I actually moved it up here. Okay, so we want it all the way, and this is where naming your layers also comes in handy because it's hard for me to tell <laughs> when I just have one, two, three. The only one I named was Sketch. So now we're working on the top there. 
Um, so these brushes are interesting. You know, they're essentially spraying images out on your canvas here. One other brush that we could use, let's see here. If I go into my glazing brushes, we added a new one that is called grass. And I'm gonna use my handy colors over here. Um, this brush is pretty cool. I'm gonna increase the size of the brush so that you can see this a little bit better. You see as I begin to apply more paint, um, you know, over the top of the strokes, it's actually increasing the, um, the color. It's darkening the color automatically for me, which comes in quite handy. So that glazing brush, the grass brush is new. So let's finish it off. Um, I'm gonna use, and I don't know how I flipped my layers back around again. We'll just add another one here. For back to the pattern pens, I'm gonna grab I like this hazard one. So let's zoom out a little bit so that you can actually see what's gonna happen here. And we'll grab our hazard pen. Okay, so as I press harder, it's doing a thick stroke. As I press thinner, then it gets thinner. Okay, so that's all based on your pressure that you're placing on the tablet. I'm gonna go ahead and put maybe a little pom pom on his head and we'll zoom out here. And it's still snowing here in Chicago. So I'm just gonna make this kind of psychedelic <laughs> snow <laughs> falling from the sky. Okay, so those are just some of the new brushes. Now, if we want to take a look in the pencils category, I had mentioned that there are some new soft and hard brushes. If I grab one of the hard brushes and I'll just sample from that yellow color and we'll zoom in here. And anytime you select a different tool that is not the brush tool, click the B key, it'll bring you back. So this is you know, a very light, thin kind of brush stroke. If I grab something like a soft 6B, you'll see how different that is. So it's thicker and more textured. All right, so those are just two of the new brushes, but the hard and soft variants within here are all new. So let's finish this crazy painting off because I'm already talking more than I planned on, Karen. Um, so I'm going to zoom out. And if I wanted to give this a signature, I could choose couple different options. Gravity Lazy Sketch is new um, in Painter Essentials 8. So I could give it a signature there. I actually happen to like, um, let's come back up here and back in the pens, there's a cool drippy pen. Okay, so there is my final painting. Now, if we had been, which we were, locking layers as we went along here, some of them weren't locked. So just imagine that I had locked them all. What if I wanted to unlock them all at once? Now you've got a contextual menu, menu at the bottom of the layers panel. I can unlock everything at once. Um, I could also do things like if I take this layer right here and we've got the layer adjuster tool selected up on the property bar, you can flip, not that I'd wanna do this and with this particular image, but you know, items on layers, you can flip horizontally or vertically. We can merge items together. Um, I could also come down here and say, you know what, just drop everything, drop all these layers down to the canvas. We've unlocked them all, all so that operation can happen. And then I could right click on the layer itself here and I could say, duplicate my canvas. And from here, I could start to play around with merge modes. And, or, you know, you could add some more to your artwork without having to worry about ruining anything. So that's just a little bit of um, some of the new tools. And I think I almost covered all of them, um, but we still have to get to photo art. So before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this image and take a peek in the questions here. So, okay. Mostly what I'm seeing, um, Jan, you had asked what the date for the launch was. It actually happened on Tuesday, February 16th. So Painter Essentials is on the market now. 
Um, I see a few of you are having audio issues. You probably won't hear me if you are, but the session is being recorded. Um, so you can certainly watch this back because I think the sound is actually recording fine. So because I don't have a whole lot of questions in here, can we use mask layers? Bill, we do not have mask layers in Painter Essentials. That's something we saved for a pro workflow. Um, let's see here. Can you make your own brushes, textures, papers, patterns? No, you don't have customizable options in Painter Essentials, um, just because once again, we wanted to keep things simple for the beginner. The one thing that you can do is um, when, if you were to buy Painter Essentials 8, all of these brush packs or many of them that I have in here will come as freebies. So we do create brush packs for certain workflows that can be purchased and then they load right up into Painter Essentials. All right, so I need to start talking faster. Um, so let's launch up our photo art layout. So if I come up to window, I go to layouts, I'm gonna say, bring me to photo painting. And from here, I can browse out and I can choose an image that I would like to start painting. So let's grab this image right here and I'll show you how easy this is. Now, when you first open the image, you don't see anything because we've cleared the photo off the canvas. So we've done step one, we chose our image. Now, if you wanna see a preview of the photo, come down to three, I'm gonna click on show tracing paper. You can adjust the opacity level of your tracing paper all the way to the left, you see 100% of the photo. So that's what she looks like before we do any auto painting with her. Um, the other reason that you would use the tracing paper, which is not something we're really gonna go into too much today, is if you wanna hand paint, if you wanna grab a brush and start to do your own painting, you can use the tracing paper as a guideline. So let's turn the tracing paper off because otherwise we won't see the painting build. And I'm just gonna click the start button. So we have 10 presets in there. I selected the first one, which is opaque acrylic. And what's happening is I'm on the MacBook Pro. Um, so it's using the Apple saliency. In the background, the strokes are gonna be, they'll remain bigger than the strokes that are going to fine tune the foreground um, because it's looking at where it should add more fine tuned painter detail. And as you're watching this, you'll kind of see the strokes switch into a different gear at one point and you'll see all the detail come into her face. Now one thing I want to mention when we are presenting online that does tend to slow up the process a little bit because other resources are being taken. Um, so this will be faster if I weren't to be presenting via GoToMeeting. So here we go. And we've now got this beautiful painted result which honestly I'm not so sure that I would even do anything else to her. If we zoom in, we can see here, you know, it looks pretty good. If I wanted to see the style, so what we do is we apply a style and then we apply painter brush strokes to it, which is what makes it look really cool. So let's just clear this off there. You can either do a command or control A and delete, or I could say undo the auto playback. And what if I want to try a different style? The way that we've set these up, we purposely created AI styles that are very traditional looking. Some of the previous styles that you've had may not have looked um, so traditional. They might have been a little bit more out there. So for this version of the product, we thought it'd be nice to bring in more traditional brushes to paint with and also to auto paint with. So now I selected watercolor portrait and we also have categorized some of the styles so that we've told you, okay, watercolor portrait, that'll be good for portraits. There's a pastel portrait. Um, it's not to say that some of the other styles won't work on a portrait because we ran the opaque acrylic to begin with. Now with the watercolor, watercolor traditionally is very soft. So we're not gonna get you know, fine tuned detail in the face because they're really not made for that. But if we take a look in the panel, the brushes over here, once you have completed your auto paint, it brings you into the touch up light brush. 
and I have a mouse here, I also have my stylus. What's nice about these um, preset brushes is let's say that you don't have a stylus and you wanna paint with your mouse. This is applying just a very light amount of pressure. So I'm clicking with the mouse button, but it's allowing me to very softly bring in parts of the original. If you have the stylus, same thing will happen, but the harder I press, you know, I can kind of control, it'll bring in a little bit more detail. So these brushes are meant to use if you want to, you know, touch up a few different areas of the image. So now I'm gonna zoom back out. And another thing that you can do with the styles is stack them on top of one another. So once I have um, the entire canvas painted, I could then apply either a colored pencil, pencil sketch, or charcoal. So let's try a colored pencil. Let this do its thing here. And now it's painting in the pencil strokes. All right, if I go ahead and tap the canvas, that stops the painting before it's completely done. And from there, I now have my stylus, you know, I could start to do a little bit of touching up. So experiment, play around, you know, stack styles on top of one another. Um, you can have some fun with this. So let's go ahead and close out of that. I'm gonna browse out and we're gonna bring in maybe the lighthouse this time. So if we wanna peek at the original, that's what it looks like. I'm gonna come to the presets and this time, let's go with a uh, palette knife landscape turn the tracing paper off, go ahead and let this do its thing, and then you'll see the result of the palette knife landscape. There's also an impressionist option. Um, in Painter Essentials, it would, had applied a certain color scheme to it. Here, it's gonna maintain the color scheme of your original image. And you'll notice that most of these do. Um, we're not immensely altering the color of the original image. So let's let this do its thing. And once it's done, um, if I wanted to, you know, I could grab the palette knife. So as you're painting, if you look at the brush selector, that's telling you what brush that the preset is painting with, just in case you wanted to go grab that brush and make any touch-ups to the image. You could do that. So once it's done, in fact, I do want to do that because I see in the corner, um, it didn't quite fill in that one little spot there. So I'm going to grab the palette knife. You know, I could do any touch ups. A large brush is going to bring in less detail. A smaller brush is going to bring in more detail. Maybe get the edges of these guys here. And then you could start to do things like effects, surface control, apply a little paper texture. You can certainly reduce the amount. Um, image luminance is really nice because it pops the strokes, makes them look like they're thick. And then I say, okay, all right. Now, I promise I'll be done in just three minutes, Karen. So I'm gonna open up this beautiful painting that Adnan created and just show you some things that you can do. So let's go ahead and let's say, we're gonna use this open image here and I'm gonna go down to my layers. We don't need the harmonies. Um, if I turn that canvas eyeball on, I'll go ahead and lock this up. I'm gonna put a layer and let's see what happens if we run the palette knife on this. So what I've been kind of playing around with is even if you had a painting, if you wanna turn it into another media style or even multiple media styles, you can do that because we could use different versions of the image and clone them together. So let's go, I probably should have saved some of these as finished so I could quickly show this. But let it do its painting thing here. Paint it out, paint it out. And once it's done, we're gonna save this version of the document. All right, it's bringing in some more detail. So where um, the original image was, you know, a little bit smooth, this one has a lot more fluffy kind of palette knife strokes applied to it. So let's grab my palette knife. Now I'm starting to panic because I'm talking way too much here. Uh, here we go. Let's grab this, fill a little bit of this in. Okay, now maybe over down to the left, we lost some of the detail in the blow dryer 
cord. So I might want to bring just a little of that back, maybe up here. And this is where you could turn the tracing paper on, okay? And you can adjust the opacity level so that you can see what that looks like there. Okay, so now I'm going to say, let's go ahead and save this. And I'll save it as a riff and we'll just call this two, pop it out on my desktop. And I'm gonna open up the original again. And this time we're gonna use this. We're gonna paint from this one. All right, so I'm gonna paint on a layer here and this time let's do opaque acrylic. Now, I actually don't even think that I want to mix acrylic with the palette knife. What I really want is the stylized version of the image. That looks very cool. So if I just want the style, I'm going to go and grab my hard touch-up brush, and I'm going to brush the style in here. All right, so now I'm going to save this one. And then we're gonna bring this one is in as a source image. So let's call this, this was uh, opaque acrylic style. Put that one to out on the desktop here. You no longer need that. So from this version of the file, browse out. Yeah, okay. And now if I use the touch up light brush, can make it look like it's actually blowing a little real air out. And we could have this guy in a completely different style from the other one. So this is where you could start to really have some fun mixing and matching different styles together and getting creative. I know that was really fast um, and I thought I was gonna have more time. Um, but please experiment with these styles and then go ahead and grab your own brushes and start painting away. I think you're going to have a ton of fun with all of these new options in Painter Essentials 8. So with that, let me go ahead. I got to pass control over to Karen. I'm sorry for going so long, Karen. Oh, absolutely. No problem. I always learn something new every time I watch these. So. <laughs> And I'm so thrilled with all the new um, aspects of uh, Painter Essentials 8. The Harmonies panel is awesome. Get used to using that. Uh, you'll also find that in Painter as well. And it's just a, a wonderful tool to be able to bring colors and, and create color stream, strings and, and keep uh, in harmony. Um, so I just have a couple of little things that I wanted to share with you. And it's kind of interesting uh, that one of your uh, uh, attendees today was talking about masking. And what I really wanted to show you today was kind of a, um, maybe a creative way of creating masking in Painter Essentials. So I'll show you that. Um, there's, there's so many things, um, that I, I love about Painter Essentials. And one of the things that I do quite often is I work in landscape, but there's also something that I enjoy doing, and that is to test how many of my favorite workflows I use in Painter, I can recreate in Painter Essentials. And the list is actually getting longer and longer with the new Painter Essentials 8. So that's really great. So you know that I love to paint landscapes, but I also enjoy working with vivid colors, patterns and shapes and creating collage. And this is one of my favorite workflows in Essential. So what I'd like to do is show you a couple of ways that you can have some fun working with selections and creating some creative type masks in Painter Essentials. In Photoshop, you'll remember that there is a layer command called clipping masks. And in Photoshop, this layer adjustment enables you to basically hide or reveal parts of your layer. And a clipping mask lets you use the content of a layer to mask the layers above it and the bottom or that base layer 
really determines the masking. And this is what we're gonna work on here. So there's a simple way to replicate this tool in Painter. Of course, it's not Painter and it's not Painter or Photoshop, but this is a real creative way. So we'll just call it Creative Masking in Essentials. So let's take a look, first of all, at the necessary steps for getting this done. And I'm just going to delete these layers here so they're out of our way. And the very first thing is these are the steps. And once you follow these steps and you learn these steps, it'll become very easy and you'll be able to do this workflow in not only Painter uh, Essentials, but also in Painter as well. So what I'd like to do, first of all, is I'm gonna close this and I'm going to bring in a couple of images here and show you how I get started here. The very first thing we're going to do is go up to the file menu and choose an option called place. And what that does is it's going to place our imagery um, on the layer. And I'm just going to go to my webinar and I'm going to pull out a horse for you here. And we're going to place it on this layer. And what I'm going to do is just use my mouse and I'm left clicking and just dragging until I have about the size I want and then letting go and selecting OK. And you can see that I've got the horse now on a new layer. Now, the most important thing to do here is to make sure that we convert this layer to a default layer. And I say that it's very important to do because it is. If you refrain from doing this after you've applied your masking, then what's going to happen is that it will revert back and you'll lose everything. So get in the habit of right clicking and converting to default layer. And you'll know that's done by the little layer icon here that's back in the default or the normal state. OK, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this horse and we're going to apply a mask over the top of it. So again, I'm going to go up to the File Place command, and I'm going to pick a texture, and I'll bring my little layers over here so you can see this. And I'm going to use these papers called Chroma Papers, and we'll pick uh, this number seven, I think is a good one. So we'll select that and choose Open. And again, I'm just going to uh, left clip, click with my mouse and drag until I have about the size I want and then select OK. The other important thing to remember when you're doing this is don't let your place image go outside of the canvas. You want to make sure that it's covering what you want to apply the mask to. And again, very important. We're going to right click and convert that to a default layer. All right, very important. I'm going back down to my horse layer here and I'm going to right click on my mouse and choose select layer content. And if I zoom in here, you can see that there's a selection or what we call the marching ants going around this horse. The next step is Control I or Command I to um, invert this selection. So this is an important step. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we're inverting on the horse or the image that we want to apply that to. Next, we're going to go to the paper. And we're making sure that we're on that paper layer, Chroma 7. And all I'm going to do is select my backspace key. And now I've got a perfect mask over that selection below. And if I use my adjuster tool, you can see that I've now now have that beautiful texture over my horse. And I can go on to replicate this over and over again. Um, I can duplicate this layer. So maybe I want a couple of horses. And the other idea, of course, here is to go up to your window menu. Um, I'm sorry, go to the effects menu and go to adjust colors. And I can always change the hue 
of those horses as well. This is a really neat way of creating clip art uh, for illustrations um, and the ability to work in the silhouette form like this enables you to go on and be able to create an original where you can then go on to adjust the hues um, and apply different effects to that uh, same image as well. Okay, so that is the basics. Now, if I have a couple of minutes, Tanya, I'll show you one more thing here. Oh, yes, you do. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, now, I've got this image here in grayscale. And what I want to do is do the same effect where I'm actually building this up using different paper textures uh, and design elements to complete a colorized image. So I've started off with a basic canvas. I've changed the composite. Uh, I, I've actually taken the image and put it into grayscale. So I have nice, strong contrast with everything that I'm working on here. I'll begin by going over to the toolbar, uh, actually not the toolbar, but the selection option, and you'll that's right below the adjuster here, and clicking on it and going out to the um, magic wand tool. Now this magic wand on the property bar, you'll notice that we have an add to selection or a subtract from the selection. And what we're gonna be doing here is adding to the selection, so we'll make sure that that's highlighted. And I'm gonna start with the tree here, and I'm just gonna tap on that area, and um, I think the tolerance was a little bit high there, so I'm gonna back out and bring it down just a wee bit, and see if I get a little bit of selection there. Actually, I wanna go this way. And let me now do the remove. And this isn't working for me. Let me tap one more time on that white. There we go. Okay, so now I've got a good selection uh, going. All right, I think that's about what I want there. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to fill that selection with a paper texture. So I'm going to um, make sure that I, I have that set up, but I know what I want to do, and now I'm going to decide what my color is going to be. So we'll go ahead and choose the place option one more time, and I'll go into some of my uh, papers here, and I'm looking for just a nice pink color here and again not too large about that ought to do it and I'm going to take that paper and line it up to this edge here and then make sure that it's covering just covering what I want that pink to be applied to so that's about right and don't forget to convert to a default layer before you begin the next step and then I'll go back down to my tree and going to my adjuster tool here. I'm going to tap on the white and it looks good. I'm going to invert it, control I. And then going back up to my paper, I'm going to select the backspace. And now I have a beautiful paper te texture over that, the, the, um, cherry blossom tree. And this is something that I can get started with. I could also use this and duplicate it. And then we'll go ahead and drag that down. And you'll notice that I got a little too close to the edge there. So I can always take my eraser and just clean that up or use my Wacom stylus. And we want to flip this. Now, a really cool thing on the layers here is that we can right click and flip uh, vertical. So that way, now I can go ahead and add that reflection down here 
you know, I think it kind of looks cool even going outside of the frame here. And maybe we want to change the composite method to screen or let's even try multiply because that's nice and soft. And then we can also go ahead and change the opacity if we wanted to. So you can cycle through these and explore some of the different composite. Overlay looks good. I think I'm going to stick with that and then maybe bring the opacity down just a little bit. So we'll do that one more time. And the whole idea here would be to just go through the image and fill it in by making all your selections throughout the image until you have really cool paper textures and whatnot throughout your piece. So let's go ahead back to the image. We'll pick up the magic wand and let's do this little mountain in the background here. And that's about right. And I love the way that it's not picking up every single color there. There's a little bit of, um, it's leaving a little bit of um, areas where it's not going to uh, apply the texture. And that's really what I was after here. So for that, it's working really well. Um, file, place, and we'll go again with something different here. Maybe we'll go back to those. Um, chroma papers and do something fun in the background. Maybe this pretty blue, select that. Drag out, okay. And you can see that is about right, just so we're covering the area that we want to um, apply that to. Right click, convert to default layer. We're going to control I or command I to invert. Go back to our paper and backspace. And there we have our beautiful texture applied. And finally, what I would do probably on the sky is go to a layer. And I'm going to change that to colorize. And I'm going to pick up uh, one of my favorite brushes, um, I love this brush called Particle Bristle. It's one of my favorite brushes to work with in um, uh, Painter Essentials. And I'm going to pick up a nice blue here and I'm going to drag that layer down so it's below. And you'll notice as I start to paint here, I get this beautiful, vibrant blue coming through and I can add and paint into this as well. Okay, so, you know, it, I always ask myself, can it be done in Painter Essentials? And for the most part, um, I've been able to find ways of creating things that we would normally do in Photoshop or, or Painter and be able to replicate some of those things in uh, Painter Essentials as well. So Tanya, <laughs> thank Hi, you. Hi Karen, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I'm, I've just been trying to address questions that I didn't get to during my portion here. And let me just take, you must have been very, very clear because I don't see any questions here. So if you guys have anything specific to that, the cool demo that she just showed, please enter it now and we can address that live. Yeah, the real, the real key thing with doing this is to make sure that you get that converting that image when you file place or whether you add an image, making sure that you convert it to default because that's important. Uh, you'll find that if you apply the effect um, and you've forgotten to do that, when when it when you actually apply it, it will undo everything. This technique works great for uh, silhouette type images as well, um, and you can even use something as simple as a brush stroke and a, and apply a pattern to a brush stroke. So there's lots of really fun and creative ways that you can work in Painter Essentials not only in the traditional manner where you're working with beautiful landscapes and illustrations, but doing things like this where it's a little different. It's more like a collage work where you're working with different patterns and colors. 
and taking into account the different composite methods or uh, blending modes as well. Lots of fun. <laughs> it is lots of fun. Even though I'm really not much of an artist, I always have fun playing around in essentials. <laughs> Um, so I want to thank everybody so much for joining us here today. Thank you to Karen for helping me out. I greatly appreciate it. And, you know, there is a question. So in regards of is Painter Essentials compatible via, through PainterArtist.com, is that M1 Mac compatible? Yes. You can buy direct from us is the one place that you're going to get the 100 extra brushes as a bonus. So I just wanted to clarify that and make sure that everybody was clear. Thank you, Karen. I don't think I really have to edit anything in the webinar, so I'll get that up on YouTube as soon as I can.